According to his own account, Muhammad became frightened, hauled himself back out of the cave and fled. The next day he returned with at least one friend and proceeded to explore the cave and its contents more closely. Some of the e earthenware jars were sealed by large bowl-like lids. Inside one of them there were three leather rolls wrapped in decaying linen. The first of the Dead Sea Scrolls to see the light in nearly 2,000 years. During the days the, that followed, the Bedouin returned to the site uh, and at least four more leather scrolls were found. At least two jars were removed and used for carrying water. When proper archaeological archaeological excavation began. It revealed a substantial number of sherds and fragments, enough according to reliable estimates, to have constituted no fewer than 40 jars. There is no way of knowing how many of way of knowing how many of these jars when first discovered were empty and how many actually uh, contained scrolls. Neither is there a, any way of knowing how many scrolls were taken from the cave and before their significance became apparent. Apparent secreted away, destroyed or used for other purposes. Some, it has be, been suggested, were burned for fuel. In any case, we were told that more scrolls were taken from the cave than have previously been recorded or than have subsequently come to light. Altogether, a total of seven complete scrolls were to find their way into the public domain. Along with fragments of some 21 others. At this point, accounts begin to grow increasingly contradictory, apparently However, thinking the scrolls might be of some value, three Bedouin took all they had found, three complete parchments according to some sources, seven or eight according to others, to a local sheikh. He passed the Bedouin on to a Christian shopkeeper, a dealer in curious and antiques, and Khalil Iskander Shahin, known as Kandu, Kandu, a member of the Syrian Jacobite Church, contacted another church member residing in Jerusalem. George Isaiah, according to reliable scholars, Kandu and Isaiah promptly ventured out to Qumran themselves and removed a number of additional scrolls and or fragments. Such activities were of course illegal by the law of the British Mandate, a law subsequently retained by both Jordanian and Israeli governments. All archaeological Discoveries belonged officially to the state. They were supposed to be turned over to the Department of Antiqu Antiquities, then housed in the Palestine Archaeological Museum, known as the Rocketfeller in Arab East Jerusalem, but Palestine was in turmoil at the time. 
a Jerusalem, a city divided into Jewish, Arab, and British sectors. In these circumstances, the authorities had more pressing matters to deal with than a black market in archaeological 